I got a lot out of Vipassana and it certainly helped my curiosity about Buddhism grow. Richard Gere hadn't spoken to me since I told him that his last 27 films sucked. So I decided to chat to another Buddhist, someone who'd actually made it their whole life. A straight-shooting Aussie Buddhist nun who looks a bit like Ronnie Corbett. The venerable Rabina Corton. Rabina, like me, you had a very Catholic upbringing. Like yep. me, you wanted to be a Catholic nun at one point. Absolutely, on my bended knees at 12, begging mummy to let me be What a... went wrong? Well, well, I cried when she said no. And then 20 years later, when I told her I was going to be a Buddhist nun, she cried. But that's quite a leap. Catholic nun to Buddhist well, nun. Well, darling, it went from Catholic, hippie, communist, black politics, feminist. So I had a few things on the way. I wasn't direct. Would you say you were an atheist then for a while? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I decided definitely it was good by God. Yeah. All of that. And then getting into sex and drugs and politics and kind of revolution and idealism and trying to find a way to see the world. And what was it that specifically drew you to Buddhism? I just bumped into these Tibetans, I mean, seemingly by accident, and I, certain things fell into place. By that time, I'd, I don't know, I'd given up sex, I'd given up drugs, I'd given up politics, and I fell into this thing, and I really Two liked... Two out of those three things I can understand. I could say <laughs> goodbye to politics and drugs. But sex. not sex, darling. That could be, I mean, I, I quite often do involuntarily, <laughs> but... <laughs> Well, I mean, for me, it was like being extremist. I don't know. It was, I made a very clear decision that the suffering and torture that came with relationships got a bit intense. It just didn't make the pleasure worthwhile. And I okay. really wanted freedom more than anything. I never wanted a home. I never wanted children. I never want, I mean, the thought of living with one person made me suffocated. Mm. For some reason, it was just my nature, you know. And were you aware fairly early on in the piece, this is it, I've, I've stopped searching now? I think part of me felt I'd come home. But yeah. then I had to do, because the Buddhist one emphasises don't believe a single word of it because Buddha's not a creator. Don't just swallow it whole, don't just believe in it. Really think about it, analyse it, and then you make it your own gradually. So that suited me. You know, having a very kind of intellectual mind, I wanted to, to, to really think about it and analyse it. What, what do you think does attract Westerners to Buddhism? So the Buddhist idea is that your body, sure, your mum and dad work very hard to give your body, but they don't give your mind. All your thoughts and feelings and emotions and unconscious and subconscious, this is like this river of mental moments that's yours, you know, and that, and that you bring it from before, that it goes back and back and back. And then this law of karma, that everything you do, say and think, like leaves imprints in your mind, like programs you, you know. In that sense, we are truly producing ourselves. And so... For me, what I found appealing about this is that this, is, this accountability thing, you know, that you, if I'm, the, if I'm the result of what I've done before, well, I can be the cause of what I want to be in the future. And then, of course, the whole business of meditation, that's Buddha's thing, you know, these marvellous psychological skills that you can practice that have been around for thousands of years that enable you to know what the hell is going on inside this crazy mind of ours. And that's the part that I think most people find really appealing, that we actually can learn to change ourselves. We're not stuck with the depression and stuck with the anger and the jealousy. What I do know of Buddhism, I'm very much attracted to, mm. and I think like a lot of people I know, I got into yoga. Sure. I know a lot of people mm. that seem to combine those two pretty that's right. happily. Exactly. Um, I suppose reincarnation is probably the main thing I go, I'm not, not, sure. So, not so sure about that. You don't have to worry, you know. That's the really? Thing. That's, well, what that's I'm the ask. point that I find, and it really takes us time to think about this. It's an ongoing daily process of, of investigation and of verification. You can be a 1% Buddhist. I know some Catholic priests who take from Buddhism Well, a lot techniques. of people take from Precisely. Buddhism. And that is it. It's not a thing you've got to swallow whole. Mm. It has to make sense, and the tools are there, and because you are the boss of your life. Who says you can't? I mean, where is it written? You, know, mm. you are the boss of your life. So you take what works. And the bottom line is, if it helps you become a better human being. You can call yourself Mickey Mouse, I don't care. Let me tell you, you're secretly doing a really good job. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not selling it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, right. it all makes tricky, sense. Tricky. She's great. <laughs> you know, I started the conversation being, yeah, I don't know about Buddhism. And now I'm a lot closer to, I'm really going to have a look at this thing again. Well, then, darling, but, you know, be authentic. Yes. Don't just swallow it whole. Analyse it, think about it, and see where it takes you. And it might be yours, it might be not, you know. Well, you know what? That's really my colour that you've got well, on there. there so, go, who knows? <laughs> Good. There's a lot about Buddhism I like, and I definitely know that yoga and meditation are part of the answer for me, mainly because they help me deal with the weeping sore of paranoia, anxiety, self-loathing, delusion, ego and misery that is my mind. 
Only one more episode to go, everyone. Sweet Jesus, let's hope I find something. There was, I, I did think this was interesting, there was a lovely German girl, I think her name was Melanie, and she particularly was impressed by the way that I could walk and not make eye contact. She said, you know, you're very focused. So I studied you for two days, and I decided I would, I would work out what you did as a, as, as a career, what you did for a living. And she eventually asked me when we were allowed to speak, and when I said, oh, I'm a stand-up comedian, she laughed for five minutes straight. And I said, what did you think I did? And she said... You were so intense, I thought, Undertaker. She Undertaker, she could be policewoman or factory. I thought maybe egg factory. You work in egg factory. So, uh, yes, it was odd for a while, but then, you know, it's amazing what you can adapt to. It really is.